Welcome to Your Hero Academia by Fangirl48. Chapter 3 Exam Time Part 1 Izuku huffed as he carried the last tire over the trash pile. He had finally reached the bottom of the last garbage mountain and found an old west bag and buried underneath. After placing a phone call, he began slowly taking it piece by piece. Once the last of the garbage was removed, all it would take was a couple of days making the beach look nice again before Izuku was officially finished his cleanup. There was this strange hollow in Izuku, seeing sand now where once there was garbage. Honk, honk. Snapping out of his thoughts, Izuku looked at the source of the noise. Toshi sat leaning out of the passenger side window, waving at him. Smiling, Izuku ran over to the large vehicle, seeing a civilian power loader in the driver's seat. Hi, Izuku greeted the heroes. Thanks for coming. I didn't know else who to call about it. I'd never say no to free material, power loader grinned, giving a thumbs up. And I have a couple of third years who are big into vehicles. This might be a great way for them to test any projects they might have. Well, I've taken it mostly apart. Izuku gestured towards the large pile of car parts that he made. Just the car itself is left over. Uh, give me a moment and I can have it loaded up and uh, flatbedded for you. Jumping off the truck, Izuku's feet never touched the ground. Turning around, he saw All Might give a disappointing look. A car is much heavier than the other items you've removed. The hero said placing Izuku down on the ground. It's a small car, Izuku mumbled. Nonetheless, All Might spoke, opening the door and getting out of the cab. I will remove it for you. Before Izuku could argue that this was his project, Toshinori was already taking off, running towards the beach. Sighing, Izuku turned back towards the car parts and started grabbing them. After getting one of the seats loaded, he felt something rest on its head, followed it, and saw a power loader smiling at him. You've really done a great job here, kid. You should be proud of what you've accomplished. Anyone could have done that, Izuku blushed, looking away. It's not that big of a deal. Don't sell yourself short. Do you know how many people just walk by and did nothing? Power loader asked. But I didn't do this to be nice, Izuku argued. I did it because I needed to do something, or I would go crazy. It was selfish. Power loader sighed. And who gets to decide what's selfish? Kid, you were hurting. Hell, you probably still are, but you're trying. Do you know how many people I've seen do something stupid just because they're hurting? It was true. Many people became villains because they were in pain. Just like many people became heroes for their so-called... Selfish reasons. Majami himself had done it to prove just how valuable support items were to the industry. Hound Dog and Vlad King did it to fight quirk discrimination. Midnight to take the oversexualized way society saw female heroes and turn it back on them. People like the hero killer didn't care that they were just a human as everyone else. The trend of money, power, and fame was becoming more popular amongst the newer students. But didn't make them bad people, just young and inexperienced about the way the world works. UA was there so that they could help the students grow. They understood that a selfish reason isn't necessarily wrong if you look at it differently. I became a hero for fame. It could be so easily turned around and used to help bring light to the darker parts of society. Money could be donated to help people struggling. Power to protect the powerless. It was all about perspective and how much work you're willing to put into it. Power letter is all right. Toshinori voice came from the flatbed sunk a little under the weight of the car. You shouldn't sell yourself short. What you've done here is a big deal, and will make people happy. Who cares why you did it? Izuku opened his mouth, 
and looked like he wanted to argue. Now come on, let's get the rest of the stuff loaded up. Toshinori smiled, pulling himself up. You have a date tonight with a pair of sisters, as I recall? Nashi! Izuku cried out, going completely red. Don't say it like that! Ha 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 May crackled as she rolled around in the background. Much to Izuku's regret, Mimi had noticed his red face and asked if he was feeling okay. Not wanting to lie to the girl, Izuku had told the sisters what Toshinori had said. It's not funny, Izuku whined, feeling his face heat up again. What if someone got the wrong idea? Charming. I'd blow myself up regularly. May snickered, sitting back down. Pretty sure the bar is set low when it comes to me. Mimi reached out and tugged her sister's shirt. May, what's wrong with Izuku dating us? Doesn't dating mean you like spending time with a person a lot? Ah. Uh, May froze, her eyes widening comically. Go ask mom. Okay. Mimi nodded and disappearing from the screen before May couldn't stop her. The invention's hand was held straight out for a moment before she groaned, running her hand over her face. I'm so dead. Karma. May stuck out her tongue. Rude. The pair lapsed into silence for a moment before May gave Izuku a severe look. Did you remember Mimi's necklace? Thinking back, Izuku remembered seeing May May holding up a new piece of jewelry last week, during one of their talks. It was a simple metal pendle, but looked like a flower that suited the girl well. What about it? Izuku asked. May sighed and ran her hands through her hair. It's a tracker. W what? Who, who would? Gramps. May answered, holding up her arm and showing off a bracelet with a wrench-shaped charm on it. I was testing out a new scanner and found them. I asked Gramps about it, and he said it was so he could keep us safe. That's... Izuku began before trailing off. Honestly, he wasn't sure what to say to May. He wouldn't have been surprised if Hisashi had done this with him and Tomura, especially after Midori. But finding and knowing about it was different than being ignorant. Gramps never talks about his past. May continues, <clears throat> looking serious. But I think something bad happened to him. Izuku sighed and took a deep breath. Let's be honest here for a second. If something happened to you or Mimi, what do you think Gramps would do? <clears throat> Bitch slap whoever idiot was stupid enough to mess with us. May answered without a moment of hesitation. Bingo, Izuku nodded. You're just upset because he didn't tell you. But really, who would come after us? anti quirkless groups for one, Izuku said, causing the adventure to flinch. Taking another deep breath, Izuku softened his tone so that he didn't sound so harsh. Just talk to him. Tell him how you feel about being tracked without permission. But... May, you're smart. Probably the smartest person I've ever met, Izuku continued. Trust your instincts. If something did happen to your grandpa in the past, you need to know. If not for your own, then for Mimi's. May sat there before nodding. He offered to pay for self-defense lessons for us. Personally, I don't need it. Anybody stupid enough to mess with me either meets the business end of my wrench, but my mom's thinking of taking him up for it for Mimi, especially with me moving to UA's new dorm system for the upcoming school year. Izuku gave a fake gasp. But, May, you haven't even been accepted yet. Keyword is yet. Izuku gave a fake gasp. But May, you haven't been accepted yet. Yet is the key word there, Charming. The inventor gave a victorious smile. One look at my babies and Yue will be begging me to join. May, 
A dark voice came as an older version of Mimi made an appearance over the back of the couch. Why did your sister ask me about dating just now? I've told you no dating until you're 30. Hey again, Izuku. Mei Mei appeared, smiling on the screen again, as Mei was dragged off by her mother. Izuku laughed and started to talk to Mei Mei. Izuku was exhausted. Turns out that UA's exams were all jam-packed together. First were all the recommendation students for the four courses. Then after figuring out who would receive the two coveted spots, the school only a couple days to prepare for the open exams. For the recommendation exam, only 50 students were allowed to compete for four spots, four highly desired spots for each of the hero general management and support courses. Izuku had offered to introduce Mei to Power Loader. The girl had just waved him off, saying she enjoyed the competition of a larger group. Usually, the hero course didn't have as many participants as the others. But last year, Nezu had changed the rule, opening it up for sidekicks to propose a would-be candidate. They still had to receive permission from their agencies, but now those who weren't in top-ranked petitions had a chance to choose someone from the next generation. Each day, ten of the students for every course completed, giving it everything they had in a battle to choose for one of the slotted after positions. So far, Isuku has seen some exciting people compete in the hero exams over the past four days. There was a boy who could merge shadows, a girl able to create anything, a person who looked like engines coming out of their legs, and another who could split and control parts of her body at will. Choosing was just so hard. Izuku wanted everyone to succeed. No, scratch that. There were a few people Izuku didn't want to succeed. The candidate for the pro hero Slended Go, for example. The hero had brazenly come to Izuku on the third day with his recommendation and introducing themselves. None of the other heroes or students had recognized Izuku from his viral video so far. But those two had, almost like they've been searching for Izuku. Something about how the hero and his protege, a girl with a powerful quirk, unsettled him. The curly boy, the girl used his quirk with such ease, it was like she'd been trained her whole life for some upcoming battle. Her tactics were brutal and complete without mercy. When she injured another candidate, she didn't apologize. She instead scoffed and called them weaklings. Then there was the way the pair had talked. It reminded Izuku of sociopaths who used to hang around Hisashi. Anyways, trying to flatter the rising politician, well, secretly holding a knife behind their back, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Nezu seems to sense this too. At the end of the day, he put the girl's file in the rejection pile with a few others. Now it was the last day, and Izuku had ten notebooks set aside for his notes. Each student got an entire notebook dedicated to themselves for Nezu to look over later. The individual trials had gone well. Students were asked to show off their quirks and explain the nature of how it worked. Two students that got the most to Izuku after listening. Inoyasha Yaguruji and Shoto Todoroki. Inoyasa was loud and passionate about wanting to be a hero, and his quirk, a wind type, allowed him to make something as simple as a breeze or as strong as a hurricane was impressive. Izuku strongly believed from everything he had learned so far that Inuyasa was a top 10 hero in the making. But that was also where he ran into trouble. The entire time Inuyasa talked about his quirk, he only focused on its combat uses, never once mentioned how it could aid everyday Sicilians or assist in a disaster relief. Then there was the way he looked at Endeavor or his son when he thought no one was watching. Shoto Todoroki, on the other hand, was the complete opposite. Quiet and focused on the exam with such a degree, it was a little off-putting. He was well-balanced in talking and about the offense and defense uses of his quirk. And he had a good handle on his application in a disaster and rescue situation. But there was also this look in the boy's eyes that had Izuku wondering what could have 
created such smothering rage. Then there was Endeavor himself. More than once, Izuku had strongly tempted to punch the flame hero. Endeavor just couldn't seem to listen when he told him to wait in the lounge area. Endeavor would just glare and cross his arms in an attempt to imitate whatever unfortunate staff member tried to caution him. The flame hero only seemed to back off for good when Nezu personally warned him if Endeavor continued his behavior, he would receive a hefty fine. A complaint would be filed to the HPSC, and Shoto would forfeit his chances at continuing the exams. Shoto Todoroki stood next to his father when Nezu gave his final warning, and his expression never changed. It was like the boy was carved straight out of ice, using his quirk, seemed to produce as he walked off silently to take the written part of the test. Izuku watched a deal-haired boy even closer after that. It took him a while, but eventually he clued into something. Joto Todoroki wasn't using his full quirk. Judging from what Izuku has seen so far, it was safe to assume that heat or fire was the other half of his power. But why wasn't he using it? Especially after the race. Anyone with eyes could see frost building upon the boy's hands. Clenching his fist, Izuku went to the refreshment stand and started gathering up the drinks. Izuku's cupboard was someone helping carry out the test. It gave the all-or-nothing user an excellent excuse of why he was there, and the notebooks he carried around left him writing down what he saw from the candidates before they were turned over to Azawa at the end of the day. Delicious! Inuyasa exclaimed as Izuku passed a cup of water to another candidate. The student reminding him of a character from an old anime, Attack on Titan. Uh, Izuku said, smiling awkwardly. Thank you? Large hands came over and grabbed Izuku's only free one. Your dedication to help us is really passionate. I like you. What's your name? Izuku, the boy said, pulling back a little from the loud boy. Izuku sh- uh, Midori, uh, yeah. I'm Izuku Midoriya. Sorry, my dad got remarried recently and we changed our names. Intentionally, Izuku winced as he lied. He had been thinking about going by Inko's maiden name when he entered UA, so why had Midori's face suddenly popped up in his head? Let's be friends, Midoriya! Inuasha smiled, leaning in closer, reminding Izuku of a giant puppy. Y sure. Dropping his voice, Hinoyasha talked a little lower. You're really nice, Midoriya, but you should be more careful around a Deborah's son. P pardon? Izuku asked, his hands gripping the tray a little tighter. And Deborah's son is just like him. The wind user hissed, lowly, glaring at the boy, stretching off in the distance. They are... Hand shooting out like Viper, Izuku used his finger to grab Inuyasha's ear and twist. This was the same move that Rin would use on Shigaraki children when they were little. No matter how big or strong you may have thought you were, once Rin got her hands on you, it was like this. It was all over. Now, you listen here, Izuku hissed, dragging the boy closer, aware of all the eyes now watching him. This is a very stressful day for everyone here. People cope with stress in different ways. But, Furthermore, if you have a problem with someone, you talk to that person directly. Izuku continued, not letting Inuyasha get a word. You do not go around talking behind their backs, especially not when you just met them today. Understood? Inuyasha opened and closed his mouth like a fish, unable to speak. Well? Izuku said, narrowing his eyes slightly and pinching the ear just a little more. Regaining his voice, Inuasha pulled out the vice grip and bowed deeply. Yes, sir! Smiling, Izuku reached down to pat the boy's shaven head. Very good. Now, you drink up. The next part of the exam is starting soon. Turning and walking away, Izuku ignored the cry of so passionate from behind him, making his way to his target, who was in the middle of stretching. Izuku was glad that the last two drinks hadn't gotten spilled. Shoto Todoroki, green eyes locked on 
with suspicious gray and blue ones. Let's talk. Okay, I just love to imagine that moment that Izuku is like really intimidating, pinching that fucking ear, and like really intimidating, then he lets go and goes back to a ray of sunshine. Just like the, the vast difference. I love that in my head for some reason. It is amazing. Um, it is. It honestly is. It's it's just the stark, stark difference between, you know, intimidating and sunshine. I love it when uh, sunshine characters have that trope where like, they are the sunshine, they are like the sun, but remember the sun is hot. The sun will burn. Sun gives you sunburns. Do not forget that. You know, it's the whole, yeah, they're a ray of sunshine, but you, you kind of forget. You know, sunshine burns, you know? It's the reason why we have to put lotion on. Um, Cause I don't know, I don't know why I love that stark difference so much. Um, it's what I love about uh, Hisashi. Uh, Yamada Hasashi, you know, uh, present mic. Um, especially in moments like when um, we first see the the first glimpse of Hisashi being like that, which is when, it, at, I believe it was in season one or two, I think it was season two. There was just a bunch of reporters outside and Hisashi's like, we could beat him up because like technically speaking, they're villains. And Aizawa being the, the, the reasonable ones, like, no, no, Hisashi, we cannot. I, I just, I love that about Sunshine characters. If a Sunshine character doesn't have that, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not, like, a good Sunshine character. It's just, I personally prefer Sunshine characters who also have a fiery side to them. A more stern side to them. I don't know. I like the stark difference. It's, it's hilarious. But... As always, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, have a wonderful day or night, join our community Discord server, link is in the description, subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.